Hello everyone, welcome to this part of the tutorial where I'm going to explain to you how to upgrade an existing ESL server installation. If you're new to the software, you're going to play around with it and have a lot of fun, but you're going to change a lot of these standard settings into your own personal settings. And you might be wondering what happens if you upgrade the software. Well, I'm going to show you today that there's nothing to worry about. So, I installed the ESL server Quite a while ago, it's version 1069.7, and I've done a couple of things to make it my own. I have connected it to a base station. There are ESLs linked to a product. That product is in a database that I'm already using with changed product names. Uh, I've changed around which templates that the software is using. All of these settings are stored on the system per user. And it means that if you update the software, those settings will not be lost. So time to prove it to you. I'm going to close the software. I already went to the Opticon website and downloaded the latest version, 72.4. So we are going to run that installer and I'm going to walk you through it because there are a couple of oddities which arise if you have installed ZAMP, because ZAMP is an external program, and because of that, it also has an external uninstaller installer program, which basically already tells you what it's doing and why, uh, but I'm going to walk you through it anyway, because it might be weird to see it happen the first time you do it. So I have version 72.4, I'm going to start the installer, I'm going to press next. We're accepting the terms in the license agreement. And it already started with all of the settings that we used last time we installed it. I installed a web application, I installed the web service, I installed the ZAMP. So basically when you upgrade it, it's going to ask to do that again. So we're going to install. And the first thing that's going to happen is that the old version is going to be removed and the new version is going to be installed. So here we see the web service being installed again. Here is the Zump installer. As it's stating, it is already installed. It is up to date and complete, which saves a lot of time. It might tell you that there is a later version of ZOMP in the installer. A note there, which the installer will also tell you, is that if you update ZOMP, it will update all of the parts of the package, including your database engine. So your database can get lost if you do that. If you don't want that to happen, don't upgrade it, or first uh, export all the data in your database, and then later import it in your new one. But as ZAMP is already up to date with what we have, it only asks us if we want to set up ZAMP with the ESL server specific settings. Well, we're going to say yes, we want. And any second now, it will change uh, stuff on the background. Well, that was fast because it didn't have to install ZAMP at all. So now we've completed the setup wizard. It asks us to restart because it changed a couple of settings, registered services. I'm going to say no. And if I start the ESL server application now, you can see it is now version 1.0.72.4. And when it boots up, all the settings that we had in the previous version are retained. We are still connected to the base station we were connected to last time. We still have an ESL linked to the product that it was linked to last time. The link table is complete. The database that we're connected to is still the same. The templates that are in use are still the same. All of those settings are retained when you upgrade your software. So we highly encourage you to always use our latest software. We have bug fixes, we have new features. It's always best to run with the latest version and as you can see, upgrading it is a walk in the park. Thank you for watching this tutorial. 
Stick around for all the other episodes on how to use the ESL Serve application. If you do run into any problems with the updating of your server software, please feel free to contact Opticon. There is a link in the description for you to contact our support channels. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you in the other tutorials.